Hello, everyone. This is Krista with Krista Does Numbers um, coming to you from IQ Podcast of the Attorney King Studios. And uh, today I have with me, or well, actually, just before, I have my co host, Brett Davis. Thank you, Brett, for being here. Of course, it's an honor. Yeah. And my other co host, Crystal Falk. Hello. <laughs> and we have our guest today, Melissa Via Gomez. Hi, Melissa. Hi. Hi. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Um, so Melissa works with Wald, uh, she works for Walden Family Services, which is a not for profit. And Melissa, can you tell us about that, please? Yeah, Walden Family Services is a foster family agency, um, and we work with children that enter the foster care system from zero all the way to. 24 and help them with transitional housing um, when they age out at 18. Perfect. Um, and Melissa, I'm just, I'm curious to know. So first off, so it's a not-for-profit. So how do you, um, you know, do you guys have, you know, you have your contributors or how do, how do you go about getting your, um, your resources, your financial resources? Yeah, so we are contracted. Um, so we are um, spread throughout Southern California, so within every county that we work with, we are we do have contracts and government funding, um, county funding, and other than that, we do um, rely heavily on grants to help subsidize a lot of um, things, and then as well as individual funding. So we do uh, galas and uh, fundraisers and um, individual donors, annual giving to help subsidize as well because obviously some of the resources the government doesn't cover everything that we need. Right. Okay. And so with these uh, interesting trying times with our world pandemic, basically, how has that been um, affecting your business or have you guys been doing anything anything different as far as reaching out to the community or just, you know, just basically just an all-inclusive, you know, what's going on with all of that? Yeah, we definitely have been affected tremendously um, from the services that we provide. You know, our social workers are typically meet with the families and the youth once a week um, as with social distancing um, and taking precautions. You know, we're unable to do that, but um, we are also, we are still checking in um, either to video chat. Thank goodness for technology. We're able yes. to do um, video chats to check in. Um, social workers are being asked to meet families and just stay outside of the homes from, um, you know, the grass area just to say hi, check in, um, make sure, you know, and check in on the well-being of the children as well as our youth that are in a transitional housing, um, you know, checking in with our youth in that way and, you um, and so we're affected in that, in our programs in that way. And of course, our youth are being affected, you know, uh, children that have visitations with their families, their biological families, that has been on hold for them. Um, our, our youth that are in a transitional housing and going to school or working, a lot of them are, you know, in the service world um, or working on campus. And so they have been affected uh, with schools closing, with restaurants closing. Um, you know, they've lost their job. Um, they're having to work remotely. So we've been having, uh, we've purchased through other nonprofits that provide resources computers so that they can continue uh, participating in class um, virtually um, and online uh, from home. But I know some of our youth, um, you know, working on online is difficult for them. And so uh, we're just trying to do our best to be there for them and support them. Um, on our program side of things. As for funding, um, we are definitely being affected. We typically have a uh, fundraiser dinner around this time, oh. which is called a spring soiree. And, uh, of course, we're not having that anymore. Right. Uh, that usually brings in, you know, n- you know, $90,000. Wow. Yeah, um, that's significant. Which is a big chunk. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, and so because of that, um, we're just being creative. We started a emergency fund, um, online fundraiser 
And um, so we're looking um, at really taking this time to call, individually call donors, check in on them first and foremost, um, you know, wondering their status, um, and also seeing if they have uh, the capacity or if they're willing to continue supporting um, because, you know, these youth, um, through no fault of their own, or you know, enter the foster care system, but they still need our support. Um, and so we are definitely affected on the fundraising side. Um, me personally, um, I my hours were cut. I don't do direct service with the youth. I do fundraising, <clears throat> and so I was okay with that being my um, having my hours cut um, so that we could you know continue supporting our social workers so they can work, work full time. And um, our, our funds have been altered a little as well. We've had to buy emergency uh, supplies, uh, masks, gloves for our social workers while they're out on the field um, to keep them safe. Um, I did, uh, <clears throat> before I was sent to work from home, I went on a shopping screen, I guess you could say, um, Shopping for our youth, I bought a, you know a lot of uh, perishables. I bought pasta and um, spaghetti sauce for our youth so that we could create bags for them um, and they could have that at home. Because a lot of our youth too um, that are in a transitional housing, they don't have cars. Um, they oh. rely on public transportation, right. um, and they themselves are afraid to take that. And so we're trying to do our best to provide all the essential, just like you're, you know, you would for your own kids or, you know, your parents are caring for you, um, you know, making sure that they have what they need to stay at home and be safe. So. Well, that's, that's very um, generous of you for doing all of that. I mean, that's, that definitely takes someone with a big heart to be able to, to go around and, and do that. Um, outside, I mean, I've been on, I'm sure your own time. So in your own dollar. So that's, um, so thank you for that. I'm sure they appreciate it. Now, there's one thing I wanted to say real quick before we go on, <clears throat> um, tell her a little bit about, uh, where you came from. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, my motivation comes from my past. I grew up in foster care myself. Um, I'm from San Diego, grew up, born and raised, but at the age of five, I entered the foster care system. And um, every person has a different story. And I fortunately was um, placed in a foster family agency similar to Walden, uh, which basically means that um, not only do I have a county social worker, but I also had a Walden social worker. In my case, it was Casey Family Program. So I had a Casey social worker. Um, who saw me every week, um, and when I once I went into this foster family agency, um, I lived with one foster family for the entire time um, that I remained in foster care, up until I was about 16. Um, so that stability just made such a big difference in my life. And so now working at Walden, I'm just so passionate, and I know the difference an uh, organization like Walden can make in a youth's life. Um, and they go above and beyond in providing the transitional housing program, which is something that I did not have growing up. I had to pay full price rent um, when I aged out of foster care. Um, but because of the support of um, the agency that I grew up in, which was Casey, they had a different kind of program where they offered a scholarship to help subsidize some of their bills. And so that helped out a lot. But, yeah, my passion comes from that. Um, you know, I can only imagine what, you know, my brothers and sisters in foster care are going through right now, especially those with um, mental uh, health issues who, you know, rely on a community um, and so socializing with people um, that, you know, are their peers and that they can talk and communicate with them. So we're trying to encourage them to take advantage of technology and um, continue that socialization just from a distance, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for me, even the holidays can be really hard. And so um, I like to hang out with friends that have gone through the system because it's something that I don't have to explain and they just understand. Um, and so I, I'm just, uh, I'm hoping that we can continue providing these essential services for our youth. We are going to continue providing these essential services. 
um, my biggest fear is just, you know, what's going to happen after this, you know, because I can only imagine, you know, all these kids are at home um, and parents are probably pulling the hair out <laughs> um, and it just causes more stress in the home. And so, um, unfortunately, as, as Brett's through, over here with no hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm touching my bald head. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and nothing and to do he with all girls. Because he has all girls. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you think that's funny, <laughs> don't you? You're, la- you're laughing at me. You think that's funny? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So, so how, are you, I mean, we're, we're... how are you adapting? Oh, how are you adapting right now with everything that's going on? I mean, how is it? Uh, have you had to change your goals? I mean, you just said, for example, you had uh, an event coming up where it's going to raise ninety thousand dollars. With everything that's going on, and and the world uh, is just in, so, in every every area of the world, in every business, every individual. I would think you're going to have to be creative more than you probably have in the yeah. past. Yes, um, we're being very creative. Um, for youth who are having, you know, uh, trouble expressing themselves, we're providing art supplies for them so that they can do drawings and express themselves. Um, our social workers are checking in twice a week now instead of once a week. Mm. Um one of our social workers, oh, she, I love her. Um, she made a video on how to make uh, tortillas. And so she said yeah. that to all her, you know, her um, families that are on her case um, and just little things like that. Um, for fundraising, uh, we are, you know, taking all these videos, these art pieces, um, learning about stories um, and sharing these stories with our community. Um, we have emails going out, you know, asking for people to make pledges and, um, you know, donations. Any donation um, is, it goes a long way. Um, and so we're definitely reaching out to the community right now. Our uh, grants, um, we're definitely reaching out to all the opportunities that are out there. The um, uh, grant, the foundations are definitely stepping up. And uh, providing more funding, there was one grant where we, you know, um, got I think about forty thousand, and they raised it to about a hundred and fifty thousand. And so we are just so grateful for that. So we're doing everything. We're looking at every different pot, um, every different opportunity that's out there that where we can bring in some funding. Well, that's good. I'm glad that they, um, those extra funding sources have been um, given that opportunity for you guys to continue yeah. And, yeah, with what you're doing. And big corporations are coming through as well. I mean, uh, I think the Bank of America said that they are, you know, pledging to give out um, so much money. And so um, before all of this, I had already been developing a relationship with Bank of America and so I'm hoping that through that, you know, we'll be able to be considered for a donation as well. So, yeah. um, just, you know, hoping for the best and keeping, you know, our spirits high and um, knowing that we have amazing social workers out there. And um, my job is to just, you know, stay in contact with people and, um, you know, let them know that we're here and we're still providing services and we still need support. Definitely. Okay. Well, if people do want to reach out and provide support, whether it be financially or, you know, supplies that you may need, um, how can they do that? Um, You can go to our website at waldenfamily.org and make a donation. Um, And then for supplies, we um, are not really taking an in-kind support right now. Our office is closed. Okay. Um, But I would love to talk to individuals that have an idea. Um, You know, like I said, art supplies. Um, We did buy some um, masks and um, uh, what are those things? The temperature um, thermometers. Yeah, um, which are very expensive. Um, we purchased yeah, some of those as well on Amazon. Um, so we're waiting for those to come in. But if you know things like uh, safety equipment that our social workers could use, um, of course, those are things that are hard to get your hands on right now. Yeah. Um, so if those uh, become available, we would. I would love to take those in for our our social workers, so they can stay safe and continue working for us. <laughs> <laughs> 